I want to talk about some basic principles of management of acute myocardial infarct. So beginning with the initial assessment, so we're going to assess airway, breathing, circulation, a brief neuro assessment, uh, begin a secondary assessment, and then we want to arrive at a differential diagnosis. And if you'll recall from one of the early presentations, this is really important. It's important because if we look at a patient's signs and symptoms and immediately label them as an acute MI, we're more apt to make a mistake than if we create a mental list of potential conditions that mimic acute MI uh, that are not MI, you know, for example, um, hiatus hernia, thoracic aortic dissection, um, uh, pulmonary embolus, any one of a variety of things. So we need to look at some of those other potential causes of chest pain. And then we want to initiate treatment, and, and in fact, uh, oftentimes treatment gets initiated during the primary survey by the, uh, the second uh, attendant on the scene. So we can treat with oxygen, we want to put them on an ECG monitor, uh, put them on an SpO2 monitor, initiate IV access, and if, um, if they meet uh, criteria, then they would receive nitroglycerin, ASA, and possibly a morphine sulfate, that's MSO4. So, um, the problem with acute myocardial infarction is one of supply and demand. These patients have um, diminished coronary blood flow in one of the vessels or a complete occlusion of blood flow, and so consequently the supply is inadequate to meet the normal uh, demands of the myocardium. And so we can uh, alleviate pain by increasing oxygen and perfusion uh, to the heart uh, and or by decreasing myocardial oxygen consumption by uh, administering drugs that, for example, reduce preload or reduce heart rate or a combination of those two. So um, for starters, we can decrease demand on the heart by um, not having the patient walk, having them, uh, you know, either carrying them to the stretcher or simply standing and pivoting them to the stretcher if, if you're working in the pre-hospital setting. Uh, we, you know, generally keep them in a sitting position, a position of comfort, unless they're hypotensive, in which case you may want to lay them down. Um, we want to increase supply of oxygen to the ischemic myocardium by giving them oxygen, and generally we treat myocardial infarcts with low flow O2, so two to three liters per minute by nasal prong, but you'll want to follow local um, protocol. We can decrease demand and increase supply by administering nitroglycerin, and usually that's given in a dose of 0.4 milligrams sublingual. And um, nitroglycerin is predominantly a venodilator, so it, it reduces preload or blood returning to the myocardium, and that decreases the workload in the heart and consequently decreases myocardial oxygen consumption. To some extent, it's also a, a coronary artery vasodilator, so that may improve um, circulation of the myocardium or collateral circulation. We want to um, administer uh, acetosilic acid or ASA in low dose, and acetosilic acid alone has been shown to reduce mortality in acute MI patients by about 23%, so it's quite a significant drug. And at low dose, it inhibits a substance called thromboxane A2, which is a platelet aggregate and vasoconstrictor. So we, um, ASA is essentially an antithrombotic. It doesn't break up the clot, but it keeps the clot from getting bigger, and that uh, in turn limits the size of the infarction, which is a, which is a good thing. Um, we can also decrease demand on the myocardium by administering morphine sulfate uh, at doses of two to five milligram aliquots. And morphine is also a venodilator, so it reduces preload, and that decreases workload in the myocardium, decreases myocardial consumption. It's also an analgesic, so that makes them feel more comfortable, less anxious, and that has the effect of uh, blunting the sympathetic response. So in other words, it decreases catecholamine release, and that in turn could decrease the heart, and that would uh, decrease um, the workload in myocardial oxygen consumption, so that's a good thing. Now, the other thing we typically do when we're assessing patients, although we may not be aware of it, is we're screening patients for thrombolysis. So we want to um, rule out things, for example, like uh, active bleeding. We want to assess for the potential for uh, dissecting thoracic aortic aneurysm, although that's pretty uncommon. We want to assess for pericarditis, and I'm going to talk about signs of pericarditis in a 12 lead later, so that may mimic MI as well. And when we, we want to look for uh, relative contraindications to thrombolysis as well, such as surgery, trauma, GI bleeds, recent stroke, pregnancy, or prolonged CPR.